We have the civil upheavals going on all over the country. I never thought I'd see the day where the entire country, most of the country anyway, would be rising up in protest along with Ferguson, but it is happening now. We're seeing Los Angeles, New York City, Colorado, Oakland, and uh, I guess I'm hearing that in Portland, Oregon, where I'm at, they're starting it up as well. So we'll be hearing more here in the Northwest about what's happening. In Seattle, uh, there's uh, one uh, group in Seattle that has started this up again. So we're looking at places in the entire country now that are experiencing what only looks like a purge. Something that was from the movies. Once again, uh, movies dealing with martial law and civil upheaval. Remember, we burn. If we burn, we you burn with us from the Hunger Games. That was scrawled all over Missouri. And it started Sunday night. 888-673-3700. That's 888-673-3700. Coming up, we'll be back. FM News 101 KXL. Let me be clear. Let me be clear. Let me be clear. As a citizen and as president, Ground Zero is indeed essential to our radio and is essential to who we are. The loudspeaker spoke up and said, Wait, Jimmy. The loudspeaker spoke up and said, Wait, the loudspeaker spoke up and said, Give up! 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 Give up
a situation like this happening. However, we never knew it would be Ferguson that would trigger this type of thing. I mean, we've had several other occasions where this could have been triggered, but now Ferguson is obviously the keg that is burst, the, the spark that is lit, the keg that's burst. You've been to Ferguson. You've seen on the ground what's been going on. Give us a little bit of the background when you were there in August and how and how you see uh, the situation there in Ferguson. Well, uh, let me paint a picture for you, Clyde. I got there on uh, August 18th, and I stayed until August 26th. And uh, when I first arrived, uh, they the, the police had shut down mass transit in Ferguson. You couldn't get within a mile of uh, West Florissant Avenue where they had the protest zone. Um, y- you had to stop. You had to get off the buses and walk about, it was about three-quarters of a mile, and there was three soft checkpoints that you had to walk through to get there. So uh, they were permeable. They had guys standing around with uh, AR-15s and, uh, you know, all, all, all manner of weapons. Um, and they would just scrutinize people, and they would pick people to randomly search as they walked through. Well, I made it through the second checkpoint, and uh, I was approached by a, a sergeant, which is a supervising officer, and two other guys. I wasn't cognizant uh, of what was going on because they slowly creeped up behind me in the car, and they actually uh, singled me out to, to be searched. In defense of those officers, I was wearing uh, some riot gear. So I looked a little bit more militant than, like, most people, you know? Okay, sure. <laughs> so um, I, I, I explained to them that I don't consent to search of my person, but, um, you know, they could pat me down for weapons because, you know, that, you know, made them nervous. So that was cool. So once I got there, um, there's a – there were, the protest zone or the free speech zone was a 10-block long section of West Florissant Avenue. And no one was allowed to peaceably assemble to petition their government for redress of grievance. No one. No one in a group of larger than three or four people were allowed to stand still for more than three or four minutes, or the police would form a riot line and push that group of people out. It didn't matter if they were mainstream media or mom and pop talking, the the butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker. You couldn't have these conversations. They would disperse you. They would use a law called failure to disperse, which is stupid because it applies to riotous situations. So no one could hold still. And it was basically like a forced march out of a pogrom or something because um, they would only allow the people to march on the sidewalk along the outer edge of this 10-square block uh, uh, section of West Florissant Avenue. So um, there's a lovely law that thousands of cops broke in Ferguson, Missouri uh, for a week. It's called uh, U.S. Code Title 18, Section 241, Conspiracy Against Rights. It's when two or more people conspire to deny someone any of their uh, rights granted to them by the Constitution. It so, comes- you're, so you're saying, you're saying for the record, that these police officers literally and, and willingly broke the law yes. and conspired against peaceable or, or peaceful protesters or, yes. or peaceful Americans who were gathered to file grievances against their government. Yes. Just Google uh, Title 18, Section 241, Conspiracy Against Rights. Um, it's when two or more people get uh, conspire to deny someone any of their civil rights. It could be your right to uh, freedom of assembly or press or expression or any of those th- those rights. And it's- we do know they were attacking the press there as well. I mean, absolutely, they were, they were actually uh, they they uh, I guess they firebombed a uh, an international TV crew, sure, a they, crew from Afghanistan or a crew from. They uh, shot a tear gas grenade right at their feet, about uh, you know ten paces in front of them. Right. Um, the media were were perceived as the enemy by the cops in Ferguson. And what I meant, meant by that is if you would stop or if you would, you would stop to interview someone on the street, they would uh, threaten you with arrest, okay? They'd use fear or co- coercion to deny you of your civil right. And, I, and, and, I'll, and I'll state again, people out there need to Google Title 18, Section 241 because that's the law they were breaking thousands of times. A, a judge uh, issued an injunction telling the Ferguson cops to cut that out. And then the very next day, they arrest another journalist. So the media was perceived as the enemy. I don't mean just what about, alternative What about media. the no-fly zones? Were you aware of the no-fly zones when you were in Ferguson? Uh, I was not aware of that. I, I researched it out academically after I left, and that was very interesting because if you look at some of the uh, tape-recorded phone calls that were talked about that's actually published on the Internet, the police actually slipped up and said that that was because they were trying to keep the media out. Mm-hmm. That's denying those um, major networks their First Amendment right to be uh, covering the story now that's also a violation of you know title 18 section 241 so it's a 10-year prison sentence you know these cops are criminals 
I am sick and, and I can't use the word. I'm just sick and tired of this two-tiered uh, justice system in America. If you're part of the federal system, if you're part of the police, you have a, a different uh, standard of justice than, than everyone else. And there needs to be something done about it. So, My weapon is a camera. You yeah. know, that's what I want to shoot the police with. I think right. there needs to be a social norm where everyone, when you see a police stop, I think an honest, a film cop is an honest cop. Everyone needs to pull out their camera and film it 